somebody calls your home, some people answer, hi. And then, and then you hear the voice on the other end, oh, hi, how are you? Okay, it's sort of like their personality, you know, they put the smile on their face and suddenly they recognize, well, that's the kind of, that's how you really want to be all the time. Comprehensive full mouth exam is important anytime you're changing any smile. You have to understand what occlusion exists before you begin. Is a patient a grinder, a bruxer? What are the triggers for that? You know, is it stress? Is it a hormonal? Oftentimes, it's a posterior tooth, prematurity and centric relation. How spastic are the muscles? Are you able to manipulate them in, in, a, in a bilateral mandibular manipulation that guides them back gently so that you can really see where that prematurity is? How does that work? To be able to find that and see, could this be that second molar prematurity that's causing them to grind? And often it is. So if you're gonna be redoing the anterior teeth, and this is a grinder, you're going to want to do anything you can to help decrease that. And maybe upon completion of treatment, make an occlusal night guard. But an occlusal night guard that's soft on the inside and hard on the outside to help cushion. Recognize periodontal implications of what you might be doing. Does this case need splinting because of mobility of teeth? Maybe it's not a candidate for individual teeth, crowns and restorations or verniers because they really need some form of splinting. I had a case though, I did rib bond splinting on the lingual, they wanted to be minimally invasive, so I did rib bond splinting on the lingual and veneers on the buckle. And we created some cross arch stability for that patient without being aggressively invasive. Okay, smile makeover, combination. Sometimes we're combining crowns. 78 years old, she wants to redo her smile. She couldn't stand it, so we did. And she's thrilled, she's thrilled. She didn't care, she didn't worry about the lower teeth being a different color. She said, I don't show them that much really. I, she just, she wanted a nice smile. When she goes visits her grandkids, she couldn't stand it when they said, this is one of the patients that you know, commented, you know, what's wrong with your teeth? Out of the mouths of babes. Here's a young, here's a young lady who had veneers done and didn't like them. What didn't she like about her veneers? They looked gray, monotone. They looked too bulky, too large with her smile. She just didn't like them at all. And so we changed them. Okay, now I don't know what's underneath those until I prep them off. So in the prepping process, I contour back to the point where I think they look pretty good. And I let her look at that and I say, okay, I know you don't like this color and how am I doing on the shape? Am I getting this close to where you'd like it to be? Before I go cutting them off. Now I can do a quick impression, a quick pour, have my assistant make a matrix of that. So when I cut them off, now I have what I want my final to be and can use that as guide to the lab. I can use it to make my temporaries, etc. Okay, so get rid of that over contoured look and make an impression and use that as a help for yourself. You know, everything we talk about in dentistry that's new and technologically wonderful, okay, I can tell you there's no question, if you take action and plan and set your goals and utilize these things effectively on a regular basis, it is the best investment you'll ever make. You know, wise people say, invest in yourself the stock market, who knows? But I'll tell you, if you invest in yourself, you're going to, in your practice and new technologies, you are going to grow. But you have to plan it. And you have to have the whole team on board. And that becomes important. Here we are picking a triple O uh, cord into the tissue. This has already had laser troughing and recontouring to uh, make the teeth appear longer. And we're just going to be placing one piece of the triple O cord around the central and the left central. After this is completed, we're going to give that all cords should sit for about four minutes and then we can pull the cords. But while we're waiting, we're going to do some 
minor refinement of the preparation because it may drop your margin slightly. We're now at the impression stage and we are going to notice the thumb support on the syringe to give stability that you need. We also are squeezing very firmly so that the material comes out quickly but immersing the tip right at the margin and keeping the tip immersed in the material as it goes around the teeth. Now because of the fact that we have a lot of sharp edges on these teeth we're going to do some air syringing and blow the air in and around the teeth. You have to do it smoothly so you don't end up incorporating any bubbles but this is going to pick up those sharp edges much better and then we go back and re-inject quickly and firmly all around the teeth. Once that's completed then we go ahead and take the syringe tip and incorporate the occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth to minimize trapping of bubbles. We're now inserting the tray. Make sure when you insert it that you go straight up. Pull the lip out and around so that you don't trap air and you're basically going to hold this now for five minutes. This is the regular set. There's also a fast set. I prefer in these cases to use the, the regular set. When you take it out, go very slowly. You don't want to go too fast. You're not going to get the same kind of flash that you get normally with cord. Laser troughing is minimal and you can see that the one tooth that we, uh, just the two front teeth were the ones with the cord packing. So. It came out great and I hope that you enjoyed this.